So, uh, this is going to be kind of quiet for a while. I'm just seeing if anybody would care to play laser chess. I don't expect anybody to show up for a decent little bit here, but I'll keep my chat window open. and I'm sure eventually somebody will come up and we'll get to play a game. In the interim, I'll just be seeing if I can get some of my chess coding stuff working. I can do to make this more interesting. Why don't I put one of those embeddable chessboard things? Um, let's see, do I have one of those that I could add to this? I think I do. Um, let's see, where could I get that from? browser um, uh, okay how do I do this oh that's how I search for a file there we go um, let's see how this works haha -ha! Just bring that over here and resize it. Uh, there we go. That should keep things interesting while we wait for people to show up. Oops, I cropped that a bit too hard. Uh, it's still a little bit aggressively cropped. Um, there we go. Just stick that... I don't know. There seems like a decent-ish position to put it. Uh, being a little bit OCD here, I want to line that up with something. Mm, I don't know how I like the look of that. That's fine. Let's line it up over here, too. Or center it. Okay, there we go. Good enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the trick to there is uh, you've got to uh, embed the... Lee Chess makes this component available. You just have to uh, download the CLR browser plugin um, and uh, embed the Chess TV into your site. It'd be cool to make all the games visible like that. And this is the kind of thing I want to do for, like, featuring my particular ladder game while I'm doing something else. Uh, I tried to do this last week, and it just didn't work. 
Um, I tried this several different ways, and I just really need Leech us to invent a component that works um, in this particular manner. And by Leech us inventing it, I mean it's really going to be me who invents it. Let's be honest. Yeah, I don't know how to get multiple games visible. Um, really, uh, <laughs> uh, how do I put this in a way that's not demeaning? Um, so, Zog has the energy and the inspiration to do these kinds of tasks that take a lot of time and experimentation and aren't especially intellectually rewarding. Um, like, if I'm doing something AI-related, I'm fascinated with AI, I spend forever on that. But doing these kinds of uh, user interface things that involve lots of JavaScript is just so gut-wrenching for me, I just can't be bothered to do it. Um, Zug might be uh, interested in doing such things. So... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you'd like to have something like that going while you're doing pairings or something like that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about, about, um... Oh, I see. Yeah, it's not just about doing pairings and such, um, but it's while the whole tournament is running, you'd like to have all the games featured in this way. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you there. There's got to be some way to do it, but it's going to take a lot of manual effort um, for a one-off thing that's not reusable for other purposes. So yeah, it's just a lot of effort, and it's probably not something Zug would be interested in either. So yeah, here I am, just looking at trying to get an opponent for the greatest chess game of all time. Um, it's quite the classic. I've played this quite a bit. Um, I honestly don't expect I'll ever get an opponent for this, but... I have to throw it out there and see what happens. Yeah, so to clarify, this is Peter Venable's Laser Chess. Um, so... In my opinion, this is the original, if not the best version of laser chess ever made. Um, and the rules are as follows. Each turn, you either get to move a piece or fire a laser. Also, prior to doing either of those two actions on your turn, you can choose to rotate one piece 90 degrees. Um... I don't remember if this game allows you to t rotate more than 90. I don't think it does intentionally, although there are ways to break that. Um, you know, that's a really good question. I don't know what else he made. I did once look up his name on Google. I know he did do other things. Let me take a look. Peter Venable is the author of this program. I, in fact, I think sent, a, sent him an email at one point trying to just get a hold of him and ask him about this. Um, huh. I'm supposing that there's more than one Peter Venable. There's no way that he could have done all these various things. Um... Yeah, I'm at a bit of a loss right now as to what else he might have done. Um, uh, 
I have played this game enough to discover that it does have some um, game-breaking glitches and such. There are ways to lock up this game, which are hilarious and probably worthy of demonstration. So, you know, since we're not going to get an opponent anytime soon, I might as well just give a quick sample game of like how this works. Um, and the other thing that's confusing here, so you see the piece with the cross, that's the bishop. So it's rook, bishop, knight. Um, laser, king, queen. Let's see, is there a way I can demonstrate the powers of all the pieces in a shortest proof game? I'm going to set my, a challenge for myself here. Okay, well just for turn one, we're going to show off just like how the laser works. So, okay, I can apparently rotate this freely. My version of the game uh, I had forever ago, I don't think allowed me to do multiple rotations of the same piece. Maybe it did. But once you've rotated one piece, you're done rotating for the turn. And unfortunately, the game does not remember which piece you rotated, so if you give focus back to it and say, Oh no, I changed my mind. Too bad. I guess that's touch move in effect, but that ah, man, that's... Okay, so I'm just going to show what the laser does. Is that not the greatest thing ever? Is that not the greatest thing ever? Pew pew. Okay. And now it's Green's turn. Um... So, let's see, uh, yeah, let's do one of these, um, I'm going to develop my knight, um, let's see, let's rotate his shield downward, he's going to need that actually. Actually, no, he won't. I've got a plan. It's gonna look cool. It's gonna look so cool. Um, so... Yeah, we're gonna develop the knight as well. Um, and here we push the pawn. And green... What's green gonna do? How can I make this look cool? Um, okay, yeah, here's something fun I could do with the queen. So the queen moves like a queen, obviously. Uh, okay. Um, trying to make this do all kinds of clever things, but I'm running out of cleverness at this point. Um, yeah, so... I'm trying to set up an amazing combination. Um, so bear with me a little bit longer. see, how can I combo this? Oh, okay, I could stick, stick my bishop way out in harm's way here. That'll be fun. We're gonna rotate the knight and move it out. And I'm gonna put my bishop out here. And... Let's see, let's rotate this. What do I do? I suppose it doesn't matter much at this point. Um, and now we fire. So this is just an example of like how some of the major pieces in this game work. Um, so laser got fired from... Oh, I can't move my cursor while this is here, but... Um, I can explain what happened here. So that laser fired from the 
uh, left laser, hit my pawn, hit my other pawn, hit my knight. Um, that's standing two rows down, three columns across. Um, which split the laser, going up and down. Um, the upward portion of that went off the board. The downward portion reflected off of the pawn on the lower left corner, hitting the opponent's knight. Um, and the opponent's knight split the laser also. Downward, it hit the pawn, striking and exploding it. Um, and upward, hitting the queen. But since the queen is looking at the laser, the laser skips the queen and the piece beyond it. And then continues onto the knight beyond the, um, the pawn there. Um, so that knight split the laser left and right. The rightmost portion hit the pawn, obviously, and the leftmost portion hit the bishop, which reflected it back into the knight, exploding the knight. So, yeah, this is basically how lasers work. It's a really cool game. Um, the one, well, there's two disadvantages to this. One, I guess it's only local play, um, and two, there's no AI for it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I guess those two things put together are why this game really, despite being a really well-designed game with cool graphics and sounds, um, I think that's why this game really never took off. It's just, uh, the only way you could play it is either against yourself or against another local player. Um, it's too bad. Because this is a really cool game, in my opinion. I think that shows off most of the features of this game. Like, it's shown, like, you could, well, how the queen reacts to a laser, how the pawns react by reflecting it. That blue pawn in the center um, actually redirects the laser forward. So, if it's struck from either its front or its left or right side, it'll direct the laser forward the way the pawn moves. Um, but yeah, I think I've demoed how all the remaining pieces work. And the rook has a little mirror inside itself. It's kind of hard to see. It's this little blue line. Um, but yeah. That's laser chess. And for the curious, yes, you can explode your opponent's laser. Um, you can also explode your own laser if you're not careful. <laughs> um, and you can explode the king as well. Uh, sure, we'll say... Well, no. I would call it that, except this variant did actually have a name. Um, so, unfortunately, because this was, like, back in the 90s, and it didn't have network play, and didn't, I don't know, unfortunately it just doesn't have an AI either. Although I don't know how you'd write an AI for this. Um, that'd be a challenge in itself. But yeah, at some point, um... I'll either find a way to get an opponent for this game, or I'll have to, um, well, yeah, I'll have to work with Zug and see if we can, um, get some kind of troll chess-like thing for this, where, uh, Twitch can interact with the chessboard. That would be awesome. So yeah, that's a demonstration. Um, also, the fact that it's played on a 9x9 board means the game does run a bit longer. So, um, it's not for the faint of heart to start a game, because these games can last quite a while. But it would be cool to get an opponent for this sometime.
it's again, I'll just be working on trying to do Lee Chest stuff um, until said time that I do find an opponent for this. Um, I'm just going to hang out here. I think everybody else is hanging out also. pretty quiet morning on Twitch. Uh, I keep trying to upload one of these highlights to YouTube and it's not working. I think I'm just going to have to redo it. Okay, where is that? Where did my original video go? So, somewhere out here, I played some uh, Blitz Chess, or I played in the weekly Super Blitz Arena. Oh, yeah, so one of my previous streams, um, I had done lots and lots of bullet and then slowed down and play some uh, the weekly super blitz, which was much, 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 much slower than bullet. Um, so I'm going to highlight that again. Why not tell the chat where to play? Yeah, we could play against one of the viewers. Um, if we could agree upon some coordinate notation or something for this game. Um, again, I think this will take quite a while to play through an entire game. Um, but, yeah, there's no reason we can't. There is a take back button if we do manage to mess up. So let me finish highlighting this video, and we'll see if um, this highlight will upload to YouTube. Alright. And then I save my standard sign-off message.
Okay. So yeah, let me set the board back up, since there might be interest in doing that. Uh, if I do all my take-backs... Oh, no, that actually... Have they fixed this? Like, if I rotate this, and I move it, and I take back, that's fixed. Oh. Huh. Okay. I could have sworn there was some bug. Let me see, if I rotate this, and move that, and I do a take-back... I must have version 3.0 of the game or something. Um, it used to be that take back would not unrotate the piece or something stupid like that. There is some way to abuse that in a player's favor. Um, that's weird. I'm so used to this game being glitchy that Seeing it actually work makes me wonder. Either my 3.1 is... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was just playing it wrong. I'm really confused. Okay. Oh, I forgot to show one other thing. Um, how do I show this? <laughs> yeah, let's get a knight into the center of the board. Okay. Knight takes pawn. Um. <laughs> Plant a knight here. Get my knight to take this pawn. Knight goes back. Knight goes back. Knight moves here. Move our knight somewhere. Doesn't really matter. Rotate. This is also hilarious. Right? Haha! -ha. So, yeah, there's another possible outcome in this game. explored pretty much all the possibilities in this game. It, it's just a cute and hilarious game. Try exporting that to YouTube and see how it goes. Um, oh, yeah, let me show off the one other thing that's possible in this game. So, when you think you've seen it all, and it seems that there's unlimited take back, so kudos to the developer for getting that right. That's not easy. Um, so, move a knight, move a knight. Knight, move a knight, and see. Let's rotate this, move that forward. Um, how's this gonna go? Rotate this, yeah, move that forward, because why not? And rotate this, and pew pew pew. 
This locks up the game. And so basically what's happening is each knight is forking the laser. And there's so many explosions lined up um, on both of those two pawns. But neither explosion takes effect yet. <laughs> this is one condition the game does not handle. Um, it doesn't handle the idea that you could have lasers continuously firing and detonating pieces and setting off chain reactions of detonations. So what the game's trying to resolve at this point are what are all the pieces that will be destroyed as a result of this move? But to answer that, it actually needs to destroy some pieces first. Um, because lasers are still firing, right? So the laser um, goes into this night laser splitter loop thing. Uh, each of which um, splits and doubles the laser, so it just keeps doubling and doubling. Um, and what this means is that those two pawns, the one we'll say that are at B3 and at G7, I think G7? H7? Yeah, H7. Yeah, those two pawns um, need to be detonated, and the laser's just to keep firing. Um, so, it locks the game because the lasers are still being split each time they go through a night. And so there's like an unending, the game is still trying to figure out where are these lasers going to end. Um, and it just keeps, you, you can't see it, but it's going in an infinite loop here. Um, and you know, if there were ever a version 3.2 of the game, it would have to fix this condition. I don't know how you'd fix it. Maybe you'd fix it by just saying after a thousand loops you're done looping or something. Um, um, but yeah, it's uh, each of those knights splits the laser in two. And um, it's still trying to calculate where are all the squares that are going to be attacked by this laser. Yeah, I'm not sure how to put this. See, in a way, um, since the knights always split this beam, uh, those explosions on the pawns should occur, and then further explosions should occur, I think. If I were the one writing the rule set, I would just say, um, well, I'm not even sure how you do the timing of this. Like, at what time would pieces get removed after being exploded? I don't know. Um, th I guess there are two ways you could do it. You could do it one way, where obviously everything here gets removed, and that just ends the turn. Everything here being the B3 and G H7 pawns. Um, uh, how, I'm not sure what to say here. Yeah, you could just remove B3 and H7 and just say that ends the turn. Or you could say that um, as these beams hit pieces, there's some timing aspect whereby they're removed in a certain order while other lasers are still cycling about the board. That gets complicated. So maybe, a, yeah, the simpler interpretation would just be um, chain reactions of explosions don't happen. At least for version 1 of the game, that would make simplify things somehow. But let me see, if I click... Yeah, no, it's still stuck. So I can click all I want. There's no stopping it at this point from within the game.
if I had the source code, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I could fix this. Um, uh, I'm actually inclined to try to like download it, decompile it, fix this bug, and re-upload it, or something like that. Or I could take the game from my floppy disk, put it in my computer, put it on my computer this way, and extract its source code by decompiling it and so forth. But since I do legally own a copy of this. Um, um, but in any event, yeah, this is like why certain things should be open sourced after a decade or two is because enthusiasts will want to come along and improve upon it and uh, contribute to toward progressing the arts and sciences which is the justification for copyright and similar things in the first place is that they do help promote the arts and sciences by um, instituting a limited monopoly not an unlimited monopoly but a limited monopoly that gives a person some opportunity to express their idea and profit from it or express their invention um, it'd be cool to fix this along with a couple other things like it'd be cool to add network play um, and add an AI but starting with being able to play with other players and I can't imagine that this would be hard to fix. Um, actually, probably wouldn't be hard to make this entire game using today's uh, technology for development. You just have to find somebody sufficiently motivated to do it. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm, I'd have enough motivation to fix a bug and just re-release it and say yeah it works um, to redesign this from scratch is taking considerably more effort although I mean what's it gonna take so you have to make a board make a game that has a 9x9 nine nine board um, that's able to perform legal chess moves oh this also doesn't okay you can save and load games um, it is possible to save and load positions. I used to have a collection of really cool um, laser shots and trick shots and things. Uh, oh man, can you imagine if there were puzzles for this game? Wouldn't that be awesome? I would like to see that. Just a laser chess puzzle and you have to like mate in two or something. Anyhow, I don't expect that people are still listening to my rant. <laughs> It'd be cool to play this sometime. Um, maybe... Oh, come on. What the heck? YouTube keeps rejecting my video. That's not cool. Um, so yeah, let me see if I could somehow, well, okay, yeah, I've held off for quite a while on this, um, I should actually, um, Oh, all the pieces... I, I did give a brief demonstration earlier. Um, let me see if I can kill this game and restart it. Uh, let's play that. Okay. So yeah, let me just give a brief demonstration of how the pieces work. So this is like turn one, you can fire a laser. Um, it reflects off pawns. 
And the blue pawns have special reflecting powers that redirect it kind of like a prism and redirects light. Um, but the rest of the pieces just move like normal pieces. So like, I can blast the pawn unless the shield is blocking my laser. Um, let's see. What would be demonstrative at this point? Yeah, let me just get a knight out here. Oh, it's Green's move. Right. Green does get a turn, believe it or not. Um, so, yeah, I can fire the laser again, hit his pawn, I can move the queen out, and then we get to see how the queen works. So the queen, the laser just skips over the queen and the piece beyond it. What happened in this case is that the laser went beyond this pawn, reflected off the bishop, and then hit the pawn. Um, let's see. Can I do anything else clever at this point? Probably not. Um... Oh, it's Green's move again. I keep forgetting that Green gets to move. Um, so... Huh. This is a fun way to arrange pieces. So this just shows that the knight splits the laser um, in various fun ways. Um... If I move said knight away, we can see other things that happen. Such as uh, the reflected laser can hit the queen on the other side. Um, again, this doesn't do anything. And here you can actually destroy your own laser if you're not careful. And now red has to operate without a laser. Yeah, so what do rooks do? I haven't shown off the rook just yet. Um, notice that now red doesn't have the fire button anymore. Um, so, okay, here's what a rook does. It just reflects the laser the way that its mirror indicates. Um, so it operates just like a pawn, except it's got all kinds of configurations as to how you rotate it. So you can have the mirror facing uh, vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. Um, so if I just keep firing this, uh, let's rotate this, and you're totally not going to be a victim here, I swear it. Unless, you know, that happens. Um, it is possible for bishops to redirect like pawns do. So that's how like a bishop works. Um, bishops do have weak points. Oh, it's red's move. Mm -hmm. So, knights have weak points, like so. Um, hang on, I need to show like how you destroy a bishop. Bishops have weak points, um, rooks have weak points. Or splat. Um, I don't know what else, what else there is to show, really. Uh, it is possible to destroy your own laser if you're not careful. And yeah, pawns still move like pawns and such. Oh. Yeah, let's get to pawn promotion since we're so close here. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Oh, this is an interesting question. I've never tried this. Um, if I've got one laser, can I promote to another laser? And what happens when I fire the fire button? Let's figure that out. 
Um, Cause that could be cool. I never thought, what if you have more than one laser, what happens? Um, can I take another? Yes! Awesome! Okay, <laughs> well... Oh, is that so? I have to pick a laser and fire it. Well, that's... that's a shame. Why should that be the case? <laughs> okay. Um, it's fine. Uh... Oh yeah, lasers can move. Um... Yeah, so I can move my king, I can rotate my laser, and I can move it. It moves like a king. So I can't move it a knight's distance away, I can't move it like a rook. Um, this is check, because uh, the king's attacked by the laser. And yeah, you can see our king is going crazy here. He doesn't like being in check. Um, let's see, how do I corner this king? This is check. Let's just check. And this is checkmate. So yeah, that's laser chess in a nutshell. I don't think that there's any draw rules for this variant, although you mean you will you could well add some but why would you do that why take a perfectly good game and then introduce drawing conditions <laughs> yeah to be honest more often than not i have won just by checkmate rather than by using lasers although there is something joyful in um, promoting pawn after pawn after pawn to all these various pieces and then lining up the perfect checkmate or laser explosion thing. Um, so opponents do tend to concede after you've gotten heavy material. It is quite uncommon to win by laser um, detonating the king. Yeah, atomic laser chest would be insane. I'm just saying. Especially if you were to say that um, a laser destroying a piece causes an explosion. That would be insane. Yeah, one thing that's unfortunate about this game um, is that lasers are kind of easily destroyed or captured so you always have to be pretty vigilant to not lose your laser um, also redirecting things is kind of a pain because you only get to rotate one piece per turn if I were to make the rules I would allow you to rotate all of your pieces on a turn which would be amazing just think of the combinations you could set up if all the pieces could rotate instead of just one. Or if you could rotate more than one, not necessarily all of them, but rotate quite a few. It would be just fantastic. Since after you fire your laser, it's your opponent's turn, and they could potentially, who knows what they're going to rotate, right? Um. <laughs> yeah, it's important to get that tenth knight. Um. So, you know, I might dig in and work collaborate with Zug and see if I can get some 
control chest like thing going here. Um, I haven't yet explored. He has um, given me part of his code, so I think I'm going to explore that here and see if there's any way I can um, utilize that for this variant. That'd be awesome. So let me take a look at what's been donated ever so generously. Um, huh. My cursor's trapped in this box up here. That's kind of interesting. So apparently after you've won the game, it doesn't let you move pieces or anything like that. I'm kind of curious how that status looks on the screen, that checkmate. Um, Let me take a look. Does that overlap with the Leech's embedded board? Probably does. Um. Oh no, it actually fits quite nicely. Although I could move down the board just a few pixels. Yeah, I'll take care of that. So, just mainly for the purposes of not boring you while I'm seeing if I can code and stuff. Um, there we go. It's a beautiful game. I'm going to delve into this code uh, <laughs> in a way... Let me try this browser. That way, at least, that won't get captured. Um, and let's peek into this. And see, like, can I get any of this going on this computer? I was originally intending to use my home server for um, doing development with this. I'm having all kinds of problems getting that server going. Um, so we're going to try it this way. Organized. There's the new folder. Um, I'm gonna need a tool like I don't know. I guess uh, Eclipse to get this going. Well, why would I stick with Eclipse? I prefer NetBeans. Um, get net beans and see if I can quickly get something up and running here. Uh, you know, I might not be able to get a bot to play against itself, but I could maybe get us into a position where uh, the chat can play. Um, or rather, the viewership can play through the chat system. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't need anything beyond just Java SE. 
try that. NetBeans 801, or 81. So yeah, we're gonna just see, we're gonna do this live and, uh, oh, okay, I've got to install JDK 7 or newer, okay, well apparently I've got to download um, JDK. Wouldn't I want to use the latest JDK six up or eight update sixty six? Yeah. Um, so let's do that. I don't know why two versions of JDK 8 are being offered on the Oracle's site. I'll take the newer of the two. And, you know, looking. Okay, install JDK 8. Uh, yeah, that's all fine. Just install it. Okay, we're extracting the Java installer. Uh, yeah, C program files Java. Three billion devices run Java. Did you know that? Now you know. Yeah, I like the artwork. It's beautiful. The sound set's pretty, pretty damn awesome for being a 1994 game. It used to be compatible with Sound Blaster Pro sound card, which is one of the more popular sound cards. So uh, there's still drivers and still ways to emulate its awesome pew pew noises. Um, I forget whether that actually made sounds through the motherboard sound or through the speakers. I forget how that used to work, but it's, it sounded cool either way. But it'd be awesome to get that running, like, making system noises using the motherboard sound chip. Not the sound chip, but the... None of you know what I'm talking about. Um, None of you have any idea, but the sound, the motherboard itself can make sounds, is my point. Okay. NetBeans 8.1. Go, go, go. Next. I accept the terms. Install, install. Always check for updates. Okay. NetBeans 8.1 is installing. 2%. 3%. Yeah, it's going to take like a half hour or something. No, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 5. I don't know. Basically, there's thousands of source code files that, not just source code, but thousands of files that just get installed when you install NetBeans 8. Or for that matter, whatever the newest Eclipse is. Um, Eclipse is a little more lightweight to install because you just say I'm gonna unzip Eclipse and stick it in my desktop or in my home path or my user space or wherever I want to put Eclipse I can just stick it and run it. Whereas NetBeans makes sure to conform to Windows standards about where do you install all your configuration files and um, DLLs and other things.
Yeah, I, um, yeah, I did know that about Taser. I did know that. Um, yeah, if you give your motherboard a trumpet, it can make noises too. Um, but no, there used to be a speaker on board the motherboard itself. And I think the original purpose of the speaker was to help give diagnostic codes during boot up. And eventually somebody got clever and said, well, can't we use the speaker like while some game is in progress or while some application wants to use the speaker during um, just normal execution of the operating system. So somehow it got exposed and was usable by applications as well. Um, And so you get all kinds of fun little noises on your uh, motherboard if you so chose. Yep, yep. Okay, so I have installed NetBeans. Um, let me run NetBeans 8.1. Okay, I'm going to create a new project, uh, this is going to be a Java project, uh, oops, okay, um, a new standard Java application project. I'm going to call this yeah, just Chernovia. Um, okay. And now I'll add to Chernovia all the donated source code. Copy these. Um, let's see, what was my path here again? Where do I have to put these files? Under Documents NetBeans Projects. Okay. Documents NetBeans Projects. Source. Um, Yeah, that will do for now. Now we'll refresh. Um, come on, you can detect it. Uh, how do I refresh from disk? Okay, well we're going to close the project and reopen it. And maybe it'll detect my source code this time? Nope. Okay. I don't think I've done anything wrong here. Um, oh, scan for external changes. There we go. Okay. And I'm doing this again all off stream, although in an interactive way, I'm doing it like off screen rather, because I don't know like what of this is um, you would care to share and what of this you wouldn't care to share. Um, <laughs> sounds like everybody's having a good old time here. So I've loaded up uh, Troll Chess. And um, in a little bit here, we'll figure out what's going on. Uh, let's see, I've got two compile errors, and I'm probably missing some libraries that are used. Okay, so I want to get JSOUP. Let me go get JSOUP. Uh, 
Okay, is there a way I can natively get this? Let's first, let's check. Okay, NetBeans is up to date. Uh, plugins. Available plugins. JSoup? Is there a JSoup plugin? Nope. Um. Okay. Let's see, what's the recommended way to use third party libraries with NetBeans? Yeah, so I just have to add the jar. Got the new jar file. Um, where do I want to stick that? I think I want to make a uh, lib directory for this project. And put JSoup in the lib directory. Do it this way. Let's just add a jar. Um, okay. Is anything failing to compile still? Yes. Oh, I'm missing JSON. Okay. I'm not sure exactly why I need JSON, but we'll get it. Oh, that's for leech us stuff. Um, there's no harm in getting it. If it especially if it's going to help things compile. Um, okay. Do I download? Using GSON. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's source code examples about how to use this. I just want to download it and fix my compile error. Um, there's got to be a way to download this. Available through Maven. Um, that's perhaps how Zug figured out how to use it. Uh, <laughs> wait, okay, is this a download link? Yeah. I'm just going to assume that this version of the file is good enough. Um, Unless there's some other way I can download it. Yeah, I'm not seeing one. It's released under the Apache 2.0. Oh! Okay, here's a download link to version 2.5. Good. There's a link to a link to a link to download it somewhere. Uh, okay, JSON 2.5.jar. Perfect. So, cut that. Put it into my lib directory. Um, add the new library to Chernovia. Okay, 
What else is failing to compile? Anything? Twitch plays chess. <laughs> okay, I can maybe make do without that class. Uh, got one compile error still. That out. And what else is failing? This down here. Okie dokie. Oops, I don't need to actually do that. I can just do this. There we go. That should compile. Alright, now to figure out how to run any of this. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 so. How do I interface with Twitch. Yeah, Troll Chess is just um, Zug's library for uh, Twitch being able to play on a chessboard. Um, My main class. Okay. And second of all, uh, what account names can I try to use? Uh, somehow we got this to interface with. See. I have no idea what this is going to happen when I execute its main method, which is why I'm a little hesitant to run any of it. Um, well, I'll try to debug this and step it one line at a time. Debug file. Can I get a console? Okay, there's my console output. Very good. Um, so we're going to step one line at a time into what any of this does. Okay. He's using Java AWT Robot. Wow, he figured that out. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah, now I've been thinking about using that Java library for quite some time, but man, it's not easy to figure out. So kudos to him for doing that. Okay. So that's how he did it. Um, okay. Um, init IRC. It's probably okay. We got an uncaught exception. Array index out of bounds. 
Oh, okay, so I need to provide some arguments when I'm running this. Apparently. Um, yeah, that's gonna be fun. Okay. needs to have at least one, two, three, four, five arguments in order to be able to run. So we'll try that again. Uh, we're going to step into init IRC. Name post auth chan. Okay. Set name, so that's the name of something. So it's the name of the bot, which will be used as its nickname when it tries to join an IRC server. Okay. Uh, change nick command would be should be used if you wish to change your nickname when you are connected to a server. Fair enough. Okay. Okay, and I'm just going to peek into this code here. Host name is the IRC server to connect to. Port is the port number to connect to. The password is the IRC password. Um, oh, and Chan is the channel to connect to. Okay, so name host. I guess auth is the okay. So yeah. Um, oops. IRC user name. IRC host name. IRC password. channel. Okay. Um, so I have to fill in the blanks when I go back to the other file. Um, so the channel I'm guessing is going to be my channel. Um, need the host name, password, and username. Um, <laughs> and argument for bot.player. I'm guessing bot.player... Well, I don't know what bot.player is. What would that be? Oh! Okay, that's the leeches user. In this case, there is none. Okay. Because this game is not going to be played on Leeches, it would be played with this. Hey, Mr. Corrupted. Yeah, I'm just doing some coding to see if we can uh, automate, or if we can have Twitch playing this game. Um, well, yeah, let's start with this. some Twitch documentation to see how is this all to work. Um, I 
we need to create a second account. Not a valid name. Oh, that's a pity. Okay, well, I'm going to need to come up with a good name. Since apparently the one that I would have preferred to take is Taken. I don't know. You'd have to ask Zug if I'm able to show the code. Um, I don't know how much of this he wants me divulging. Um, and I'm totally cool with whatever. Um, but I don't think there's much need to show the code because there's not really... Most of this that's going on is me just figuring out how to do this. Um, let's see. Um, what would be a good name? I have to come up with a good username. Something that I won't regret later, you know? Um, <sighs> dot, dot, dot. What would be a good name? We'll come up with a name. There are ways to make this work. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Oh, damn it. Okay. It's not that somebody's taken these names, it's that Twitch recognizes that they're registered names, or they're reserved names that can't be taken. That's quite clever. Um, there's no way that people have taken these names. But it means I'm gonna need to do something original. Oh. So... Um... And like all the obvious Twitch plays chess names have been taken and such. I actually don't remember the deal with Twitch IRC. I know it's IRC. That's about all I know. Um, so, more info would be useful. Let me check out Twitch's documentation about creating an IRC bot. Because I will be interfacing, presumably with Twitch, to make this happen. <laughs> oh, oh, that's excellent. Oh, that's so hilarious. Oh my goodness. So, looking for Twitch for help on how to create an IRC bot, I came across Zug's comment where he's asking for help. And um, apparently he says that somebody else helped him and it wasn't one of the people on the... Okay. <sighs> But the deal was, I was the guy who helped Zug figure this out. And now I'm figuring out what it is that I previously helped Zug with. It's hilarious. Oops. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. Thanks for sharing the link. Uh, I do see it. Um. So I'm going to take a look at that. Uh, 
da, da, da. Okay, well that's cool. Uh, they have a policy about bot creation. I guess this IRC thing doesn't mention anything about bots. I think they allow bots. I mean, certainly there are quite a few bots on Twitch. Uh, Right, right, right. That all makes sense. I'm sp the main reason I'm hesitating right now is just because I'm trying to come up with a name that doesn't suck. And I'm thoroughly uncreative. Um... Oh, I see what you're saying. You could, you're saying you can share your Twitch Plays Leech Us bot source code. Actually, um, maybe later. Like right now, all I'm interested in is predominantly Zug's use of this, uh, the core Java libraries to move the mouse around the screen and click on things and drag them and such. Um, he did some really advanced things, not knowing that they were so difficult. Um, he just did them, and I'm impressed by it. See, like, whereas I would get really frustrated trying to figure out how to get the mouse to move about the screen properly and click on a piece and click on another square to move it to, um, somebody relatively newer to programming just finds all the programming frustrating and uh, has the patience to work some through some of those things. Um, which is pretty cool. So, 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 I'm going to create a new account. Um, Oh, really? He's... Okay, I should get on Leech Us IRC then. Hello. I I just expected that, you know, he would be offline and such, but, um, that's pretty cool. Oh, well, okay, he's probably not active. Well, you said he's chatting on there. That's hilarious. Um, he has no idea. Um, but again, most of my struggling here isn't technologically driven, it's just that I'm being awful at coming up with a creative username. Um, and I, it's probably best that I do create my own username. Um, okay. Okie dokie. Uh, He's being quite profound on the Leech Us IRC at the moment. I'll not share his profundity here, but I would encourage people to... <laughs> uh... Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. What would be a good name for the bot? I'll come up with a name. I really, I will. The name is the hard part. For those unfamiliar, uh. Da -da -da. Here's the link. What would be a clever, clever name for a bot? 
you know, other than clever bot, which has obviously been reserved. Obviously, uh, even if it weren't, it's been overused. I'd rather not do that. Hmm. <laughs> no, no, I, oh, sorry, I'm getting confused because now I have two IRC windows open. Yeah, Vsim bot is good, because Vsim is a good username. Like, if I were to do the Music Dan bot, that's just overdoing it. And that's why I'm hesitating here. Really, it is. <laughs> uh. Hmm. Yeah, epidural. Uh, uh, that's 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 a good comment on the comic. Um. <laughs> Wait. Okay. I wonder. I think, yeah, obviously, Leeches allows. Um, okay. I've got a name. It's not perfect, but it'll work. Oh, come on! What are the policies about usernames? There's no way that all those have been taken. Or maybe they have. Wow, I am that thoroughly uncreative. That's... that's amazing. Uh... Dang. Somebody's taken Hell 9001. I thought that was clever. Because it's over 9000. Okay. We're gonna try this again. Um... We're going to try to be more clever. I want something that's memorable but not overly confusing. Because we see, like, um, Zug and other people struggle over my username on Twitch all the time. And so I want something that's concise and yet in some way creative. Um... And... Also, something that's not going to get me sued for copyright infringement, you know? Or defamation or anything of that sort. So, yeah, I'm looking for something. Yeah, Zug and I both struggle over this. Um... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess once you get over, like, ten characters, it's easy to confuse usernames. Because there's just so many characters, and the average person can only remember seven things at a time anyhow. Can't bot leaveable. That's quite entertaining. Uh, it'd probably confuse everybody, unless I either, like, change can't to, like, can't, then you'd have, like, can't bot leaveable, and then still nobody knows what you're talking about. But it's still amusing. But, but man, that's quite a mouthful, is it not? Um... Okay. Uh, I've got a name. There's no way this name's taken. I'm just deliberating over whether it's good enough. Yeah, I think this will work. 
Okay, yeah, nobody's taken that. That's that's a stretch beyond a stretch. There's nobody would get the reference either. But um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um. Select images with trees. There's a tree, there's a tree. Okay, I found all the trees. The hard part's going to be remembering that I have this account. Okay. So, I now am the proud new owner of this account. Um, and this is irc.twitch.tv. Um, okay, so I have some confidence that this isn't going to mess anything up for other people, so I'm just going to run it. Um... Connected to server. Error logging in. Okay. Uh, disconnected. Okay, why was there an error logging in? I am following the instructions, right? Oh, my password should be an OAuth token, as opposed to an unencrypted password. The entire pass, the entire presented token, including OAuth, can be substituted for the old password in IRC client. Not just can be, but it's required. Um, oh, come on. Yeah, I have to generate. Yeah, I see that. That's a good link. No, you're still here. All is well. And I see the link. Um, So let me do that on this computer, because there's no way I'm going to remember the entire OAuth token. Um, so Twitch apps um, dot com slash TMI? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, there's my new password, encrypted. It's not even a password, it's a OAuth token um, that I have, because I have a password, I'm able to generate an OAuth token. Um, okay, try this again. Run. Alright, do we have anything in our chat window? 
Um, Okay, so I got a null pointer because um, we couldn't find the admins file, which is cool. Totally get that. Um, able to... something's not right there. Where's my resource directory? Or is it embedded? Okay. Yeah. I need to... Um, how do I get at this? First, I have to fix the logging, I mean. Um, something in here... Uh, that's not right. Something is looking for this file called admins.txt. Okay, I found... oh, it's right there. Um, and upon failing to load admins.txt, I get not a very useful logging message. Um, oh, because it's a file not found exception. Fair enough. Um, what's he trying to do here, anyway? He's trying to read the... okay. Well, if he demands a file name, I guess he does. <laughs> uh, da, da, da. An input stream reader can use any input stream. Yeah, really, I just need to get the file name. Um, which is a pity, because I don't have that as a file name. Um, but, uh, get resource. Nope. Okay. Twitch chess bot dot um Wait, how come I can't do get resource to get the um the actual name of the file? Fine. Whatever. And grab the fully qualified file name. Uh, man, that's a mess. Whatever. that will get the file. Let's try running this again. Yep, yep, yep. So, it's my bot here. I don't see it here. How do I know whether it's here or not? Okay, it doesn't appear to be here. Uh, how do I join my own channel? Maybe it's in the wrong channel. Uh, 
join pound channel name. And here I use join, okay, without a pound. Oops. So. Details, details. Details matter. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps I do have to invite it. Okay. Uh, I think I'm making progress. How's this going? Yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. I, in fact, it is seeing the messages that you're typing into this channel. Which is good. Oh, in fact, yeah, it's now listed at the top of the viewers list. That's cool. Um... So, so, so... Um, how do I test it? Obviously it's connected at this point, but what am I supposed to do with it? It's the real question. Yep, 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 that's its name. Don't wear it out. Bonus points if you can actually figure out the reference. Um, yeah, we're going to find out in a minute if it's possible to play on this. Um, so, basically, I have to um, take out a lot of these commands and figure out what works here. Um, Yeah, like the mathematician. Uh, okay, I guess I need to run this in debug mode and see, like, what's it doing. Oh, it's communicating everything through private messages. It's not exactly what I'm going for. So... Okay, this command TCH right now communicates in private messages somehow. Um... Okay, what's the IRC protocol? Um, okay. Oh, I see. So it's trying to communicate to the channel in private. Um... need it to communicate to the channel as a whole. Um, let's see, what subset of these commands do I need to disable to make this safe to run and test out and improve? Um, I guess we could start by disabling all its commands or something. Um, let's see. Let's 
just need a much more limited set of commands to work with. I see how some of this is working. Um, let's see. that'll do. Yeah. Let's try this once more. Um, debug project. Um. Yeah, private messages are just... wait. Are you saying I have to use the private message command to communicate to the channel? So if I type help... Yeah... Hmm... Apparently, private message is necessary. Gosh darn it. Um, so colon, username, exclamation, username. Yeah, private message, channel, colon, message. Okay. No, I see what you posted, though. Um, so we're going to try that again. So I'm just curious why when I type help here, it's trying to communicate a message to the channel. Um, yeah, Nightbot's just picky because there's things that look like URLs in the message. Um, but no, I can still see the message before or after Nightbot axed it. Um, so it's just trying... Uh, I'm curious why this attempt to use private message is not working. Like, how do I debug that? <sighs> Something's not right. Why do I not see... Um, does anybody see that text from the bot? Um, 
you know, possibly against my better judgment, I'm gonna make Godel Escherbot a mod on the channel. It shouldn't affect anything. <clears throat> Okay, so apparently now it works. Um, don't know why it needed mod privileges to do anything, but hey, on the bright side, it works now. Um, Yeah, by the way, most of those commands aren't working just yet. Um, just FYI. <laughs> um, okay, so it does accept IRC and does reply. Um, so that's pretty cool. Alright, I've missed out on all Zug's profound messages in the Leechess channel. Let me catch up. <laughs> ah, good old stuff. Um, yeah, sure. We'll we'll try this command. I think I even disabled the make admin command. Most of the commands have been disabled until such time that I'm going to go in there and test every one of them and make sure they all work. Um, um, so the next big challenge um, Let's see. Well, question. Does NetBeans support hot code swapping? I don't know whether the command is make admin or something else, but I pretty much disabled almost everything for now, so... Um, even making somebody an admin probably doesn't do anything. That being support hot swapping. Oh! In the toolbar, there's three linked green rectangles. Oh, that's the 